Okay, we get to that point in the build. Uh, I think this is part six, it might be part seven actually, where I'm going to try and attempt to repair the keyboard. Now I know from the assessment I identified that there were four keys on here that were iffy. We'll use the word iffy. Um, we know that the C key uh, C4 was completely dead um, and C sharp uh, 2, C sharp 4 and C sharp 5 were, were kind of iffy. Now what I did, I'll probably do this to the camera that's above so you can see this, I kind of did a little bit of a key map for myself. Um, it's just really easy for me to work out what's going on. So if you think that key number one is here, which is C, and therefore if you count the keyboard up, key number 61 is here, which is probably slightly off, yeah, it's just off camera um, on this end, and therefore you can count the keys up and work out which keys are the dead keys and mark them appropriately. So having done that, I've worked out that key number 14, key number 37, key number 38, and key number 50 are the dead keys. Now with a bit of luck, that mark there should be key number 37. Um, but we'll work that out um, by counting up the keys. So key number 14, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that one there should be key number 14. Now I'm doing this with um, whiteboard marker so I can just wipe it off. Okay, so I'm not permanently marking the keyboard here. I'm doing it with whiteboard marker. These will just wipe off. So if that's number 14, uh, and the next one up I said was 37, which I'm hoping is that mark there. So that'd be 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 37, look at that. So that's 37, that's one of the, uh, that's the dead key. That's 38, which is an iffy key. And if we carry on counting up, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. That is the second, uh, well, the fourth of the keys that have been identified. Now I'm hoping that, you know, if you look at this, this is not seat sitting right. So I'm hoping just reseating that might help the problem. Again, this is not sitting right. Um, and that's not sitting right either. So maybe it's just that dirt's got underneath these. I'm hoping that it is dirt that's going to ca is causing our problem here. Um, but now we've identified what, which ones they are. The next job is to take this rubber uh, strip, which is effectively underneath that rubber strip you'll see in a minute, is just a contact. It's a, just a graphite contact that makes contact with a pad or two pads on the underside. Now, again, if you're looking at this from the camera that's above, you'll notice that there's a short, pe a short piece, a longer piece, 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 and a very long piece. Um, now I've come unstuck in the past here uh, in that sometimes these want to go back in a certain order. So the way I deal with that is this time I have got an indelible marker and all I'm going to do is write one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine. Um, not the best handwriting, but hopefully that will remain while I go through the cleaning process. Um, there was another way I thought of marking this up, but we'll we'll have to deal with that as we go along. Right. So that's the keyboard marked up. We know where the what the bad keys are there there and there we've marked the rubber grommets up so the next job is to take the rubber grommets off the keyboard and actually see if we can see anything that really looks like a problem i've decided i think one of the next purchases for the uh, for the channel is a set of monitors that i can have 
off camera in front of me so I don't have to keep looking up at the monitor that's on the camera up here and the monitor on the camera there. Anyway, in order to lift these up, theoretically they should just lift um, very easily. But the way I'm gonna do this is a very simple flat blade screwdriver and I'm just gonna pop that underneath the first one and they should just pop out and then you should just be able to lift Well, actually this is interesting because that's not split as I thought it was split so there you go and there you go the first one off and there you go if you look at this um, if I bring this back to center camera what's very interesting is you can see the discoloration of that contact which is the contact that makes contact here which is one of the the, the keys that we've said is an issue. So that's interesting because that could be what's causing the problem here. Anyway, we'll put that over here for the moment and we'll lift the second one. Again, all you just need to do is put a flat blade screwdriver off just to lift the first piece and then gently pull like so. And again, let's just turn it over. And again, you can see that these contacts aren't completely clean. There's, there's definitely this one here, which is this key here, which we said is again is a, a key that was intermittently working. That's considerably um, got a discoloration. I'm not sure this will come across on camera. Okay, I'm hoping it does come across on camera, but um, it might not be coming across on camera. So that's number two. We'll lift the next one. And by the way, guys, I know I'm using a flat blade screwdriver. Now that you see that one is separate, like so. And again, let's look at the bad key. There's discoloration there. I think somebody's had this one off in the past. And I'll tell you the reason why I think that is because it's been cut. It's that one. Let's try this one. Oh, that one just lifted up without having to get a screwdriver underneath it. Be very careful. What I was going to say with the flat blade screwdriver is be careful not to damage the circuit board. All you're trying to do is just lift the corner of these contact strips so you can just pull them off with your finger and again that one's got the the bad contact yeah and we'll do the last one Now, what I'm thinking at this point is that this could just do with a wipe down with soapy water. So if you look here, you can see where dust has got in between the two strips. And again here, dust has got in. So I, what I'm going to do, I think, is just go and get a, a little tub with some warm soapy water in it. And then I'm just going to wipe this, um, this chassis down and see if I can get rid of the, the marks like here. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go and get some warm water. Remember, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Go over to Instagram and follow me there. Go over to Facebook, follow me there. That's where the normal notices are. And consider becoming a Patreon.
one of the things about when you're cleaning circuit boards is you always go for the least abrasive option first. Sorry, the thing that's crinkling is I had a, I had a Maltesers bar, um, which I really shouldn't have because I'm not really allowed them. Um, but it was, what was crinkling. Um, but you always go for the least abrasive um, subst substance. Now the least abrasive substance is treated water. But um, you kind of need something that has uh, a detergent in it when you're trying to get stains off a circuit board like I'm just about to do. And I always find warm soapy water and one of these things does the trick quite nicely. Um, if the circuit board is really mar marked, I have been known to put them in the dishwasher. Why well, put them in the dishwasher? Because dishwashers are very good at cleaning things and they're extremely good at cleaning circuit boards. But don't put any circuit boards on the bottom rack in a dishwasher. Always put them in the top rack. Okay, because it's less heat. Um, and I've never blown a circuit board up yet by putting it in the dishwasher. But you have to remember, you need to make sure they fully dry out. So they need to spend about a week in the airing cupboard or next to the boiler or in a hot room somewhere. The other thing about warm soapy water is if you have got something acidic on the board it um, it doesn't necessarily neutralize it because obviously for those that remember their chemistry lessons if you have something acidic you have to put something alkaline to neutralize it but what water does is it dilutes the effect of acid to the point where you effectively wash it away um, so as I say the term neutralize is the wrong is the wrong thing to say but in this case i am hoping that all that dust and rubbish is lifted off the board now what I didn't bring out with me is I didn't bring any kitchen towel out with me, so give me a sec, I will go and find some kitchen towel. Unrolled kitchen towel. Now what you need just be careful with is kitchen towel is that where it catches on the solder points. But you're just trying to take the excess off the circuit board so it allows it to dry. Well, that's what I'm doing anyway. All I'm doing, um, to be honest, is just getting rid of the dust, any remaining dust that's caught between this felt pad that's at the base of the keyboard and the circuit board itself, and any pieces of kitchen towel that's managed to get itself caught around a soldered joint. Uh, now, at first glance, I have to be honest and say, can't see any breaks in circuit board but the naked eye is not the best thing for this sort of stuff so this is where my trusty magnifying glass comes in 
So what I'm going to do now is, and I won't do it on camera because it's it's quite a boring, laborious piece. I'm just going to go over this uh, circuit trace, especially around the, where I've marked the keys as as potentially um, dead or not working properly, and uh, have a look and see if I can see if, if it's a circuit problem. Um, now. I don't know whether it is, I mean they all look pretty good to me, so I think it probably is just more of a contact issue. That's um, what my thinking is here. So anyway, we'll have a look, we'll see what happens. Okay, I've changed the lens on the camera up here, so hopefully it's, it's you can see my fingers are touching the board. I'm not sure this is really coming across on camera, but um, these are two of the dead keys, and this kind of is a bit is exhibiting on all the keys that um, that we've got issues with. And if you can see, there is an indentation on the sharps and the C um, in in this area here, and that's replicated up here, and it's replicated down here as well. And as I say I'm not sure this is really coming across on camera, whether you can see this or not. Um, but I don't know why it is on the C keys. I can only assume that Gary used to play a lot of C sharp notes. Because um, the other keys are not exhibiting that behaviour. It's, it's kind of just certain keys that seem to be exhibiting the behaviour, um, the, the indentation. And I think we can probably just deal with that by a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and just cleaning the pads. That's what I'm kind of hoping here. Um, and I'm hoping that that's come across on the ca on the on the overhead camera. Um, what I'm talking about here, in terms of the tracks themselves, I can't see any broken tracks here. Um, all the tracks seem to be fairly intact. I can't see any cracking in terms of soldering, so I don't think I need to reflow anything. Um, so I don't actually think this keyboard is that damaged per se, apart from probably a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on the pads and then some cleaning off the um, uh, the rubber strips that go back over these and giving those contacts to clean with isopropyl alcohol. And I think probably that will allow this thing to work again. That's my view anyway. We'll find out when we put it all back together, of course. So what I've just done is I've just quickly rubbed the end of a Q-tip like that over the pads on here, just to lift off any surface grime that's on the pads, uh, especially these pads here, which seems to have cleaned them up quite nicely. Um, now you don't want to press too hard with these. It really is just a light, you're just taking off the surface layer of grime, if you like. Um, and you'll always get a pad that comes back like this. Now don't worry that you're seeing it as black because it's graphite at the end of the day. It's a graphite pad. Um, the second job is to get hold of the contact strip like this and you're just trying to take off if there is any surface contaminant on the contact strip like so. Hopefully that's coming across on camera. Um, with a bit of luck, that will create the contact again. And you just need to repeat that on all the contact strips that you've taken off. especially the ones for the contacts that were, you see that one's cleaned up really nice. Um, and it's just a case of rinse and repeat. So again, a bit boring not sitting on camera doing this, so. Okay, off camera what I did is I've just popped into the kitchen and I've just uh, run these rubber strips under some warm soapy water as there was a bit of surface dust on the top. Um, just to get rid of that surface dust. So they're now all quite clean. The pads underneath them are clean. Now we need to put them back on the board. 
Now, here's a tip that somebody gave me a few years ago and it works really well, is, um, I think I said on the channel a few years ago that I bought a couple of these uh, multi um, screwdriver screw bit sets. Um, this is not my favorite actually, my favorite is this one. But the the screwdriver for this one is actually in the house at the moment because I'm using I was using it for something else the other night. So I'm using my secondary one, which is this one. Um, either are good because they have lots of different small screwdriver bits in them that allow you to get into all kinds of electronic type screws. Um, extremely useful these are, um, and I'll put a link to those below this video for anybody who's interested in uh, getting one. But what you can get here is you can get like a little pointer. And that pointer doesn't need to be very much bigger than, if you look at these, there's a little hole and you put the pointer in the hole and you are able to push that through the hole in the circuit board. And that's how these things are attached. So the easiest way to do it is start one end, you put the dibber in like so and you just push. And it's relatively easy if you can get the, the thing in the hole like so. And then you just move up. The keyboard. You don't want to apply too much pressure, but it's literally just a case of locating it over the hole and then just pushing it through. Like so. I suspect in the days gone by, Roland would have sold you a special tool for doing this. And then at the end of each piece, let's go back over these. These are not big uh, holes, but you just want this to be seated completely flat. Like that. So that one is now firmly put back on and I'll carry on and do the rest of them. Now the reason why you want to make sure that these are all flat, so you want to make sure that all the the holes are, or all the the bits are pushed through effectively forming a flat surface is because that is the only way the dust doesn't get underneath it. If you've got any of these that are raised, then you've got a way for dust to get underneath them and onto the contact pads, which is what I suspect has happened in the past because many of these weren't sitting flat when I took them off. Um, now, um, hopefully it comes across on the on the overhead camera, but all these are now absolutely flat um, to the board. And obviously we've gone through and we've cleaned all the pads and we've cleaned all the all the contacts on the on these actual plungers. So with a bit of luck now, that is all those done. And as I said, I uh, marked the board with whiteboard marker. So just by doing that, I can get rid of all the marks. So that is uh, the keyboard repair done, um, or this part of the keyboard repair done effectively.
So, we move on to the next bit. So let's recap where we are. At the end of this episode, we have now cleaned the keyboard contacts. Um, off camera, I have cleaned the keys. Um, so they did look like that. And now they look like that. Not sure whether that comes across, but that was done off camera because that's quite a boring job. Um, three new keys have been sourced to replace these broken keys. Uh, as you can see, uh, let's do it this way around. As you can see, the, the hooks are broken. And uh, we've replaced, we've cleaned the rubber contacts, we've cleaned the pads. So this keyboard is ready to be reassembled, but that will happen in the next episode uh, of this series of videos. So for, the, for now, live long and prosper. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.